I've got now and what I'm showing you is absolute child's play. And soon mm. you know, will be able to really go, oh, I want the car to go this way. And then at this cross junction, I want it to take a left. Like from what I've, you know, we've made out those things are going to be possible soon too in the VV verse. So. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the VV Vintage Podcast. This is a very unique episode because we're interviewing the creative geniuses behind a Vivas demo that everybody loves. I've seen this demo for over 50 times now since the first time that I put it into our interview with Dan, the CEO and co-founder of VV to show it to everybody for the first time until today for this particular interview. And every single time I would find something new, something awesome that really elevates the experience. And that really speaks volume to the immense talents that these designers have. Our guests today are Tales from the Rizzo and Mr. Falcon, two VV collectors and Vivas designers who basically just took things to the next level and opened up our minds on what can be done and the possibilities of VV's metaverse. I got goosebumps from talking to them because they are so talented. They spent over two months on this two minutes video and I guarantee you, every single time you watch it, you'll find something new, something awesome, something that will really help you to understand the story better and appreciate the work. We'll talk about their creative process, all these little details revealed for the first time ever, and everything in between. Let's get to it. Tails and Mr. Falcon, thank you so much for joining us today. This is our, our first time having showroom creators and now Vivas designers on a channel. And we cannot think of better guests than you guys. I think um, showroom and the design aspect of VV is probably one of the most underrated features on the app because what you and many other have spent many days, months creating is truly unbelievable. And um, in the past, I have tried filming showrooms because I really wanted to highlight your work. I bought a phone to film it too, but then I stopped because there are some showrooms that are insane. It just... There's so many collectibles and so many cool animations that my phone will crash. Then I will have to log in, scroll all the way down to find it. Um, so I kind of stopped doing that. But now I'm happy that you will have a much better playground to show your talent with the Vivas. And again, uh, Mr. V and I, Mr. V has worked today, so he's not able to join. But we really appreciate you uh, being here with us. And I'm sure our listeners will get a lot of interesting insights from you. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Everybody. Hello. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you for this. Well, honestly, it's, it's great. Um, obviously, we're going to go over the questions you sent, but I was just saying to Mr. Falcon beforehand, that probably the best set of questions we've ever, you know, we haven't done many interviews like this, but yeah, I'm really appreciative that you guys want to find out about the creative process. So, Yeah, man. Thank you very much for having us and uh, much appreciated. We We always appreciate the spotlight. Yeah. <laughs> I think you guys deserve a lot of the spotlight because out of everybody, and you know, we are all content creators of some, some sort. Uh, I think the work that you have done is extremely unique and it just shows the amount of effort that you put in. There's no substitution for hard work and, and we and we can really see that. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So my first question for you guys is um, how did you guys meet or slash become friends in the first place? Are we friends? Would you... I'm not sure. Friends? <laughs> yeah, we're pretty good friends. I'll, I'll let Mr. Falcon take this one because I, I I answered this last time. Go oh, on, well, we met we met in prison. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm just gonna every time someone asks this question now, I'm gonna do like a joker. Like, you want to know how I got these scars? I'm just gonna <laughs> tell a different story. Um, yeah. no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I haven't been to prison. Don't know about tales. Uh, but we um we well it was right. Right at the beginning of uh, of our VV journey, wasn't it? So I I had um, recently bought my first VV collectible, which was a, a Joe Mad Batman, because uh, my mate showed me the app and said, "Oh, you like Batman? You'll like this." Um, and then I I took a picture with Joe Mad and it's like, "All right, that's that then." Uh, but then I found the vault and realised that you could start telling stories with collectibles. So I started posting some things on on twitter uh because i saw that there was a, there were a few people there like community growing and then uh mr tails uh who was who was making stuff as well reached out to me um and said hey man you you look like you're creating content i really like it uh why don't we have a have a zoom call and chat about a potential you know collaboration and uh 
you know, some sort of content creation forum. Um, am I right, Tails? I think I'm right, aren't I? Pretty, yeah, pretty I'm going to keep going. Um, so we we did. We had a little Zoom call. We had a little chat. And we realized that we had quite a lot in common. We were both English men. Um, <laughs> and I think we, you know, we we were just being creative. We were not looking for anything other than an opportunity to share some of the fun stuff that we'd made with our collectibles. That was all it was. Um, and we got on very well. And then Tails reached out to some, some more creative people. And uh, we all formed a band known as the Voltaholics. Um, and we we kept creating and uh i mean that's that's the long story short really and ever since we've we've become i suppose we've become friends let's let's just put it out there um and we do we share a lot of the same interests we we both love movies and uh you know a lot of the ip that vivi shares obviously batman uh the marvel stuff um and more recently you know things like predator alien we know they're coming um so we're very excited about that but yeah that was kind of how we how we came together did you have anything to add there tails did i miss anything i think you've nailed it mate yeah just uh exactly what what uh falcon said but i knew he was english before he told me he was english just from the the kind of content he was putting out and his sense yeah. of humor replies i just knew this guy was british um, <laughs> And, then, and here we are. I don't, I don't have anything else to add. Falcon nailed it. Yeah. And then we we met, didn't we? We met in person. I think it was one of the first, it was a VV meetup in London. Um, and it was almost, this will sound wrong, but it was kind of like an anti-climax in that it was like, <laughs> oh, I, oh, you're just that guy that I've been talking to. Like, we just got on really well. So oh, okay, we get on well in person as well, and that was it. There was no, there was no big reveal, which is a bit of a no. shame. He didn't dress up or anything. It was just, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. But, um, yeah. And we met up a few times, and it's it's lovely that we've we've been able to to come together because of because of this community and these collectibles, which is great. And yeah, just just to add on to that, I think that's actually really important. Is um, the full, like like Falcon said, this is the first. VB meetup and prior to that this is March last year so March 2022 mm. prior to that you know we were all so new to VV you know it was it was the bull run we all thought we were going to be sipping mojitos on an island yeah. together a couple of weeks instead we were sipping on a Jaeger bomb in some you know horrible little pub in <laughs> London but it was still I think that because I met Mr Falcon that day for the first time I met Q um yeah. You know ski a lot of the, the the kind of uk community and what was so nice is i came away from that going oh it wasn't you know when people say don't meet your heroes i, I was scared that i would meet everybody come away from that and go yeah maybe you know this isn't for me but yeah. it elevated uh what i thought before so that was real good confirmation that the majority of this people people in this community are who they say they are and yeah. i think that's and I think that's one of the things that I I enjoy hanging out with Tails because he's a genuine guy, uh, as I hope I am too. You know, you kind of, uh, you get what you see. And it was strange meeting everybody, but you, so I have met with in other communities before and uh, it's like, oh, your digital self is a lot better than your actual self. <laughs> but in this case, um, everybody was was just as they were. Uh, it's very natural and um, and genuine. And I know Tails there has a very strong sense of community. That's one of the things I admire about him the most. And he uh, is very prolific on the spaces and he kind of uh, drew me into that world. Um, and it's nice to be able to just to pop in and chat to people at any time of day because they're normally going on. Um, so, yeah, it's lovely. It's lovely to be part of this community. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's amazing to see all these friendships and collaborations mm. that have uh, been created from just the VV community. And I had the same experience too. I, when I first joined, I, I still don't have any uh, close friend who use VV. So um, I had to make new friends um, yeah. for, for just VV. And I've met so many wonderful people and actually uh, I met them. I met many of them in real life for the first time at the last New York comic con. Uh, right. and particularly Mr. V, because I, I I work with him on this podcast. 
mm. for maybe 10 months now. This is like our 10th, 10th month oh. running it. And I just met him for the first time uh, wow. maybe like three weeks ago. And he's the same guy as he is um, on a channel. He's super nice. Uh, and I'm, I'm very glad that you guys um, have a great friendship, uh, very genuine friendship uh, as well. And um, I also want to congratulate on you uh, for having your work, the uh, Vivas demo, being being that one video that really opened up a lot of people's mind about the possibility of the Vivas. Um, because the first time I saw it, I was blown away. And uh, as somebody who really enjoys seeing um, showroom designs and, and those kind of things, and uh, I, I really admire your work. So to those um, who are listening, how would you describe this particular project that you worked on? Maybe you, maybe we can go back to all the way to the beginning and then your roles and how you have developed it, those kind of things. Yeah. So yeah, it was kind of obviously as, as people know by now, um, the VB verse bait was released to 30 ish people back at the end of July. Obviously myself and Falcon been doing work in the app for years. Well, it is years, two years. Yeah. It is. Um, <laughs> And I think the thing, I, I, obviously I'll let Falcon speak for himself, but I was just so looking forward to just going, right, there's going to be the new possibilities, right? So especially when it comes to this this whole Gotham build and the Dark Knight thing, you know, I have to shout out my boy True Tech Junkie because he actually came up with the idea back in October 2021 and he just hopped on a space. We'd already been quite good friends and chatting. He was like, I've got a challenge to put to you. I know you love the Batman. Let's make our own Dark Knight scene each and we'll kind of battle it off against each other. I was like, cool. And I just never really got around to it. Just I've done loads of Batman-esque vaults, as people have seen on the app, but I couldn't really, you know, if I'm really to to do, you know, a true tech junkie, you know, not test, but, you know, he's put me to the test. I can't I can't be half-hearted. So when we got the Vivi-verse, um, you know, I just wanted to make sure, first of all, that everything works as it should, which it did. It's like, great, we'll be able to do these close scenes without knocking one collectible out from the other because of the arrows. You know, if people have used the vault, they know exactly what I mean. Um, and then, yeah, so we just got in the verse. We, we were all just, like, learning it, creating our own little bits. And then I think I've just finished, like, this stadium build. And then once you're done, and I'm sure, again, Falcon will allude to this as well, when you're a creator, once you get to the end of that creation, it, it, it kind of hurts, right? Because that's been your thing. That's been your baby for so long. And then when it's gone, now you have to fill that void. And I spent two weeks on this, um, you know, hopefully you guys get to see it soon, the Sunny's, Sunny's Edge, but, um, Love, Death and Robots on Netflix. I basically paid homage to that. Anyways. Yeah, it's awesome. I, I was like, I'm going to build Gotham. He was like, what do you mean? I, <laughs> I'm going to try and push this, what we have now on the VB-verse to the limit, and I want to build a whole city. And Falcon was like, that's going to take some while. I'm like, yeah, I reckon three months. We're now two months into it. Obviously, now I'm starting to put out content relating to it, uh, but it's still only 50% done. Um, little nitpicks I even have for myself is like for the video you saw the other day, even though they're really quick shots, there's a couple of quick shots from Gotham, and I'm like, oh, I forgot to put the sidewalk in there. I haven't put the pavement down, but because they're so quick. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that that was kind of the start of the idea. And then, again, when this is what we were finding so different from the verse to the vaults, right, is that on the app you can, if you look at, go, go back in history and look at through all my vaults and go, oh, this one looks like it took really long. The longest it would have taken to create film everything two days mm. you know you can spend and it's look i don't want to put people off that are going into and i know will you want to touch on this but what what i what we me and falcon have created and yes it took us two months is not you will be able to create something of v reverse that is visually spectacular and that you will love and be happy to share with the world within a couple of hours not once you've got used to it but i just wanted i was just like this is going to take three months, which means I, I don't have that feeling of, oh, what am I going to do next? I've always got something to create with Gotham until, it, until it's finished. Um, but yeah, Falcon, I don't know if I've answered the question. Well, I just kind of went off. 
<laughs> but uh, no worries. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, as Taylor Taylor alluded to, I think we're both sort of tortured amateur creators uh, and uh, creatives, and you know, we we have been we've been creating content for some time now. In in the vault, it is different because you're you're putting together a few collectibles to kind of uh, to create some kind of story. But with this, with the VV verse, anything is possible. Um, and we we went from pictures of still images. Tails was making his his very always his very moody and dark uh, merged, you know, collectible videos, which were always so cool. I was trying to, I started trying to make little films with the collectibles and thinking about how do you tell a story with these things and make it, it put some kind of movement into it as well, because when you're just looking at a still picture, it can get a bit boring. Um, so I was, we both were, were pushing each other on like that. And I know, you know, other people as well, True Tech kept doing crazy stuff and, um, we just kept going and every time someone would do something be like, Oh, that's amazing. And then someone else would put something out like, Oh wow, that's even better. Um, and then it got to the view reverse, like you said, and I found it quite intimidating because it was, it's just a blank canvas. Um, and we, we started creating lots of different things, uh, as tail said, but yeah, he, he, he did. That was exactly what he said. He said, uh, he started with it, with a bridge, um, the, the, the bridge from the dark night with a, with a, burning bat symbol in it which looked amazing which hasn't even been seen yet i've just really been seen sorry <laughs> spoiler alert um and uh and then he just kept going he just kept building gotham i don't think he slept i don't think he has slept for uh some time um but it's worth it right it's worth it it's fine it's <laughs> you'll totally see it. later um yeah. but yeah he he built gotham and i would visit um and uh, I, he he let me construct a few very small things in there, which was really fun. Um, but Towers. he has sorry. Shout out to the W on Wayne Towers. Shout out to the W on Wayne Tower. That was me. <laughs> um, and uh, and a car park which we haven't seen. But um, yeah, he 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 actually just built this city, which is which is possible, um, and uh, it's absolutely fantastic. And then well, and then he came up with the idea to. To make a movie, which again I said, what? <laughs> no, don't worry about it. But here we are. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Well, if you need to get on to the next question, but I just want to say on top of that as well was when I said to Falcon, I want to create a film. I want you to help me write it and create it. The first thing Falcon said to me was like, okay, we can definitely do this. He was like, what you need to do is take yourself away from what you've been doing in regards to all your books so all my vault videos have always kind of had the same formula big epic set cinematic soundtrack my main centerpiece will be at the crescendo and it's all very to the beat and it's like almost like a music video because i used to dj and produce it's just in my nature to just i have to have things in time and falcon was like when we do this you need to be able to move away from that so i think that's been the kind of the hardest part for me but also one of the most enjoyable is just doing a different process going right in my head this scene hits here and whereas falcon will go that's great but this scene needs to be a bit longer this scene needs to be shorter <laughs> and then i'm kind of like but there's no beat there it's like <laughs> it's fine just do it and now that i'm watching back and i'm just like yes this feels more like a movie now and instead of a music video so yeah, so my I guess my my background in that respect is certainly not professional, but I I love movies as we both do. Um, I have made some short films and um, and I made a few, as I said, a few films with my VV collectible. So I have, I think I have a decent idea of how to tell a story. I suppose in in terms of what shots to choose, um, and and through, I did a one with the Iron Man and Silver Surfer. And through most, that process, most underrated fan made movie. I'm telling you, that is too slept on. We need to retweet that again. Sorry, Phil. Please but, do. <laughs> but through that process, um, just really having to re recreate shots and just work out what's the best way, the most economical way to tell a story here from get to get from this shot to this shot, 
and for your brain not to have to do too much work in between. So that was, I think, hopefully I've given that uh, perspective to Tails. And, uh, you know, in that in in that respect, the, the writing is me suggesting how to link these shots together to to tell the story in the best way. But the way he it, it does work with the music and I think it's helped with the pacing. And I, I think it's a beautiful combination. Works yeah. well. Working really well. And especially because, you know, originally Falcon was going to come into Gotham. We were going to, he was going to shoot some shots. I'd shoot some shots. Luckily, I have duplicated some. So for people when they get in a verse, well, once it's probably rolled out, I'm sure this issue sorted. But yeah, so because of that, it's had to be, okay, I film shots. I send them to Falcon. I wake up to a message from Falcon in the morning with a really detailed feedback, which I love. And he'll be like, First shot, perfect, maybe one second later. Second shot, bit jarring. You need to put that after that because you're going from this shot to this shot and it looks too similar. So, yeah, again, once we talk about the actual, the the, the demo or the, or the gothic, you know, Escape from Arkham, uh, when we were doing the Harlequin going towards the uh, Arkham, felt like I'd shot that all and felt was like, great shots, but... Your your what's that? What is it? A hundred and eighty degree rule. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, so we we have we've talked about many filmmaking techniques. Um, so <laughs> there is there is they call it the hundred and eighty degree rule in in filmmaking. So your your camera should if you draw an imaginary line between two people, the camera should not cross that line. So it should film one person. You know, if I was shooting a conversation, I'd shoot. If I was shooting over my right shoulder, I'd then have to shoot over the other person's left shoulder. Because mm. if I didn't, we both look like we're in exactly the same position. It'd be very confusing. So you have to kind of stay on one side of the truck in this case, rather than switching around all the time, or it, it just disorientates you completely. Um, so that's another thing that we've been we've been working on through these shots. But it's crazy, you know, you because you can shoot anything. You can do anything you want. Uh, but I think we we both have very specific ideas. Um, and we we've managed to arrive at, at many compromises, which is good. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, but it so... is awesome waking up and I just get all these shots in my inbox, these incredible shots of Tales of Gotham City. It's such such a such a privilege and such a treat. It's wonderful. How are you? Yeah. So um what I understanding is you guys can both work on the same showroom, like collaborate um and make all the edits. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. So in the V, I'll, I'll try and give it a, a, a quick one. Um, I don't open a new space, right? And then mm. in the top right hand corner, you have this thing called manage members or invite members. So you would put in their VV uh, username. Um, as soon as I put in MR, it comes up, you know, Falcon's on my quick search now. <laughs> and then you can click, yeah. yeah, then you can click invite member. And that is just so they can enter the room. And then you can also change their their settings. So I can have Falcon be able to edit stuff or just as a visitor. Um, yeah, unfortunately, at the moment, it's it, I wouldn't say it's restricted. But for example, Will, if you were like, Tails, I want you to, you know, go into my verse and I want you to build me a Disney room. I'd be like, OK, no problem. But you at the moment, you would have to put in all the collectibles you want to use. So I couldn't go into your room and choose from your list. Uh, we've obviously fed that back to the team and said, if, if you want to really push this cooperative building, which is definitely going to work, because me and Falcon, even under the restrictions of our great fun doing that when he was building the car park, is like, you need to be able to give the, you know, the builder full full license to be able to go duplicate this, you know, or or pick this. But um, the, the fact that those foundations are there, you know, I'm super excited about because we've been talking about this kind of thing since 2021, right? And that, that's what we're really looking forward to as well. Yeah, that's that's it. We actually get to collaborate now, which is what we've wanted to do for a long time. Um, and it's so much fun just going into someone else's vault and hanging out and having to chat with them and playing around. It's it's really cool. It's uh, it's definitely my favorite part so far. Yeah, and, and just thing to add to that when falcon was creating the car park he was talking about i'm at one side of gotham he's at the other and i was half forgetting that he's there 
So he, I just get a message going, can you come and, and duplicate this square for me five times? I'll go, oh, sorry, I forgot you there, buddy. Turn around. Oh, wow. Like, the other side. Uh, so it did feel very <laughs> cool. I, I think, you know, some people might almost feel a bit weird at first because they're like, oh, I'm in your space. I don't really know what to do. Like, But me and True Ted did it when he invited me for the first time. And I was just... I just stood in there, sat in there, like staring at everything for two hours, and we're just chatting, like you know, like we are now. And it just felt very organic. So I was like, "This is really good because this is what we need. It needs to feel natural. It needs to, you know, for for this thing to really work." So. I I really appreciate the fact that you mention your thought process into into the music, and how different beats of the music will match different scenes, and how you use the lighting and, and everything to create that atmosphere because I also love making videos. I like to film when I travel. Mm. And for me, music is huge. Like I can have this video and the music has to match the exact cut um, and the exact scene. And it has to describe the the mood or the location or the nostalgia, whatever I want it for that particular video. And I can see it in your work. Yeah. Um, and that is a very that is a skill that um, that not that the viewers may not appreciate. But when you get to the nitty gritty of things, if you actually edit and get to the milliseconds of the editing process, like oh, I want this beat to be on this exact scene, like yeah. you mentioned, like oh, there are yeah. different cuts we have to redo, or this cut should be longer because you know X Y Z. I really appreciate that because I also go through the same process and I know how challenging it is. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think we've all got a, a, a smidgen of obsessive compulsive disorder. <laughs> yeah. uh, you have to, if it's a, because it's funny, my patience with some stuff is really bad. Um, and people tell me like, how do you do? Your patience must be incredible. And I'm like, for this it is, for other things it's not. There's levels, you know, there are levels. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, well, I fully feel you. You know, mu music to me, I've always kind of been is the cheat code. Um, like I can watch, look at my content of creating the app and and appreciate it. But the funnest part for me is when I get to make the the movie or or and I'm picking a soundtrack. Like I, I love all that stuff. And I think that's something I've come to accept from from Tails's process is that he he and as as do I. You know, you I know the importance of music, and you got to hit those beats but it's about how are we going to tell the story in this amount of time before you want to get to that part and what are the right shots to do it in? So that's been the the most fun, challenging part and the part that kind of is revisited the most. You know, this works, this needs to be shorter, this needs mm. to be longer, and you'll send me many different versions. But when you get there, it's like, oh, yeah, oh, okay. There it is. There yeah. it is. You know, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because... You know. You know, there's some videos and even some movies that have beautiful shots, like mm. super clear, everything, all the angles are right. But then you like you would see like, oh, maybe this is a little bit too long. So, so or maybe the music doesn't elevate what you're seeing. So that yeah. just messes things up um, completely. But what you have created, to me, the first time I saw it, and then we'll get to the video shortly, was like before seeing your work, I was I I'm, I'm used to filming showrooms like in showroom things are static like you move around you see these yeah. see these things but when I see your showroom yes like the the kit car and the Coca Cola truck and the, the DeLorean they do move around so that's kind of cool but then there are some elements like Harley Quinn disappearing uh or you know the the fact that you use the face of the Joker on the Coca Cola truck maybe towards the end of it. Yeah, that, yeah. that that got me quick. It was like, okay, these guys are not creating a showroom; they are creating a movie. That was really awesome because you you just took it to the the next level. And and for some of these things, you have to watch it multiple times to see mm. it. And yeah. that's what I appreciate about it is that there's all these there's all these cool things that you get it when you get it. Yeah, and I. I'm so pleased you said that, Will, and because you brought up the Harlequin shot, because I feel like this is a perfect segue, right, Falcon, because we'd already come up with a story. I'd already said before we even made the movie, I was like, look, I'm going to make a Gotham room. It's going to have Arkham Asylum. It's okay. going to have 
the hospital from the Dark Knight that blows up uh, is going to have, you know, all these things from the films that are, that, to recreate. And so Falcon started doing the storyline. And then I was like, yo, what if we do this? And I was like, I'll have <laughs> Harlequin standing here. Coat, coat, coat truck goes past. Harlequin no longer there. And he's like, love it. But that mm. shot took ages. And, and we oh, filmed <laughs> <laughs> and the reason it took so long is because not because of the movement of the cars that's that's really quite easy to do it was just like are you noticing harlequin here yeah and shots after shots after shots and then we we decided on this one but even like i think falcon when i sent that shot to falcon at night i was like he's gonna wake up and go i still can't see harlequin then he was like i love this shot and i'm like but can you <laughs> Anyways, we got to the point where we were like, it doesn't matter because if you know, you know. If you notice it, you notice it. And if you don't, maybe you'll go back. Because, again, Falcon said to me, he was like, Toad, you've got so much going on in that scene that it's hard for you to focus on a particular bit, even though Harlequin's in the middle. But yeah. I really thank you, Will, for saying that because you've, you, you have, what's the word? You've literally epitomised what I thought was. People will either clock it and love it, or they don't, and that's that's on them. So yeah, amazing. Thank you. Yeah, because when I uh, when when I was uh, back in college, I took this film class, and one of the movies I watched was The Shining. So oh, you know, to oh, yeah. to to the majority of people, they watch the movie, and they get scared, or you know, they feel these X X Y Z emotions. But when we watch it under the angle of a film student, uh, and I only took maybe like a couple of film class, you see and appreciate different things. Like yeah. that one opening shots of him driving through the mountains and all those kind of things. And there's certain angles and the way they color correct. Those are the things that only certain people can appreciate. And one day, and, and, and that's how you get like these, these masterpieces that will then you know, get passed on for generations of like, oh, you know what? This is the example of how it should be done. But I want to get to the the, the demo because I want to go into the, the details of things. So what I'm going to do now is share my screen. We're going to play the demo um, uh, once, like the, the whole demo. And then I will stop at different scenes that I think are, are just amazing. And then we can talk about them. Cool. Cool. Perfect. All right. Cool. Let me get the video. One second. Pinch out for a bigger view. It said, I remember, remember ugh, I'm doing this on my phone. So, no worries. You guys may see me look over to this side because I have two screens now. Um, this okay. screen, I'm looking at you, but I have my questions on the left side. So, I'm going to switch back and forth, but I'm going to play the cool. video now. We're going to watch the entire video and we, we're going to get to the questions. All right. Great. Cool.
Let's All go. right. That was that was that was amazing, guys. Last I haven't week. watched it in a while. I'm not gonna lie. That, that, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. have seen it probably over 20 times now. I saw it multiple times before I edited it into the into Dan's interview, and then I watch it way more times than I could have counted right after that. Amazing, thank you. Yeah, That's amazing. Cool, Let me see. Let's get to a scene that I really like. Okay. Um, so this scene. So this is a podcast, so I'm just going to try to describe it to the listeners. I'm mm. going to try my best, but um, this is a scene where you see the, like, this is like a, like a micro view of the city of, of Gotham. And one thing that was very impressive is the use of the videos and even the GF on the face of these buildings uh, and billboards. And I like how they sync together. And when you combine that with the the lighting effects, it just puts you right into a regular Batman movie. Um, mm -hmm. So if you can walk me through the process of how you use those videos and those effects on on these buildings, that that would be awesome. Yeah, sure. So some of this is almost kind of like fluke, if I'm being honest. When when we started the VVverse, they gave us the option to add our own materials. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that it should be known. Um, that, you know, this function in the VBverse is there, but whether everybody has this from the off, I don't know. So I don't want anybody coming to shoot me going, why can't I do this from the off? But anyways, <laughs> so with, as, soon as, they, as soon as I realized that, I was like, okay, I know because, again, I've used overlays and it's kind of just looked rubbish in the past on, on my old Volks, but I love lightning. <laughs> I have a bit of an obsession with it and, like, so I knew that when we could add our own materials and gifts and stuff like that, it will be on a constant five second loop. But, you know, when you have stuff like rain, fire, like lightning, all, all of these kind of things, I was just like, right, let me add a load. I also wanted, so the room I was creating before Gotham was, again, this, this Sunny's Edge kind of room. And I wanted a load of bricks. Now, uh, VVverse, they, VV do give you these free materials, which are a lot, better quality than the ones I've bought in. So when you have the bricks, amazing. But I was just like going onto AI, going like real dark, decaying bricks and 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 all these things. And then when I started putting this together, you know, what one of them was like, I want walls with graffiti. So mm. as you can see the screenshot, I know this is obviously for the pod, but in the bottom right hand corner of this particular shot is literally a graffiti building, but it was like an animated gif of, of like a bird. Um, oh, I love that. I love that. But then on the other side, you know, you might have something that people still haven't noticed yet or, or the water. The water was just, I think I put in like trippy gif, right? Mm -hmm. and trippy 4K gif. And then, you know, I got a load and then I just saved the ones I liked. But that's what, for me, and I, I don't know what the Falcons are saying, but that kind of opened Pandora's box in the VVverse because I'm like, now you can really make bespoke stuff that is just for you. Now, obviously, if somebody wanted to go and find that on the internet, they could, but it's not like these are the collectibles. You all have access to them because you're all buying them. Now, I know some are more scarce, but for me, I was just like, this is amazing because you can you know, do stuff like that. I hope that kind I of explains. <laughs> we, I was not as prolific with my uploading of, of gifts as Tails was. I sort of missed the boat there. But I think what's been quite fun is beyond that, we've kind of had to create our own textures and adapt the ones that Vivi have given us. So, you know, you can add a metallic sheen to bricks. Um, I did. Sh I showed you the moving water thing, I think, Tails, because you can use the a pulse uh, to kind of change certain things. So to change colors, to change uh, the amount of texture something has, you can actually kind of create this water effect. So there are ways to do things without having these gifts as well. Um, yeah. But that's been a very interesting process and quite good fun. So, yeah. You know, there's always ways I'll, to work around it. I just want to reiterate that, uh, uh, Falcon, as well, because, yeah, like... The materials that you get to use in VV are mm -hmm. incredible. And no matter if we've all got the same, there are still ways to manipulate them and get super yeah. creative with what they give us from the start. So 
Yeah. But his do look really good. I think there's a scene where the floor looks like water. But I yeah. but I really appreciate the fact that you want something your own. Like you could have easily used a video of water raining down from a building or some, something like that and bring it in. But you want it to be yours. Like you want it to have your own um, taste on it. So that's why you you created it. Um, and, and, and that's really cool. So what you did for these buildings is you brought these videos in, right? And you kind of embed it but you kind of lay it um, underneath the the like like the window frames or something like that. Is that is that your intention there? Yeah. So for example, um, especially in this scene again, mm -hmm. you'll see on the right building and on the left building lightning kind of inside of the building happening at the same time. So that's the same image, right? Yep. But you stuff like so add a shape, mm. add a brick material, but then you can there's like a and again, until you see it, it's going to be really kind of jargonish. But you can add a material, then you can add a normal texture as well. So you almost like there's again, this isn't in the video, but there's a shot where I've got lightning coming down a brick wall, but because the brick wall is manipulated in a certain way, it almost yeah, like you say, it looks like it's literally embedded. It doesn't look like it's just mm. oh, mm. he's. Uh, a thing of that and that's where you can really get bespoke and creative mm. with what yeah it's within the within the textures that you're provided with it's it's the the texture itself the normal file and the what's the other one yes it just says normal i think but... this is a 3d modeler thing which we yeah, are yeah. not but i'm sure they're all going oh you... <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah we'll get there all right Let's let's get to uh, let's get to the the next scene, which is on the twenty first second. All right, this is one of my favorite scenes. But before we get to anything else, I want to talk about something I mentioned earlier of like these little things that you put a lot of time in. You hope people would notice, but it's okay if, if people don't. But the 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 people who really notice really like really appreciate it so i want to talk about these zebra crossing lines or yep. the white stripes indicating the pedestrians crossing they are not white but they have this like blue neon ish color that is very consistent with the overall theme how did you make them it's funny you should say that will because until you did i didn't even really notice it but i'm really noticing it on this part too that mm. me and falcon are doing because we've got a lot of red and blue flashing lights constantly mm -hmm. to represent police. Um, but I think this is just... Uh, so behind th these uh, zebra crossings is like some shops that I've made and they have a pulse going on it. I think, you know, it's like a bit graffiti art on bricks, but I make the colours go green, red, blue. And because that's just behind, that's now elevating that light you know, towards the outer scene. It depends on how much you, you know, crank up the volume, so to speak. But I'm I'm going to assume that's exactly what he's doing because I'm noticing it on this part two that we've been working on. Uh, they all look like they're doing that all the time. It's a lot more prominent, but that's because of the red and blue flashing lights of the police are just always there. Mm. So that there are, the lights... There are things... things... Sorry to yeah. ask, go on. No, no, go on. That, that, that was it. I was just going to say, there are things within the vault, so you can set the, the the settings of your space you can change the color of the fog so mm. you can turn up fog which will mean that from a distance things can almost disappear completely and that will change the color of of everything within your vault there's also a a light so you get a spotlight you get a point light which kind of casts light all around and there's another light can't remember what it's called do you remember tails uh directional which is like almost directional changed. Which just changes the color of everything, so you yeah. can quite easily change colors, take away colors. Um, so it, but yeah, you're right. There is this lovely kind of neon glow to everything, isn't there? Yeah, cool. and something I want to add on because I've noticed this, and and this is what I love about the Vverse. And um, so this shot that you see right now, mm -hmm. it's pretty much the center of Gotham City for me. Like this is at the crossroads, whatever. So this is gets going to be used a lot in in the movies. But uh, with VBverse, 
and with a lot of these digital worlds, you have a thing called a skybox. So, for example, if you go into the vault now on your app, you go outside, you see the, the sun and the sky, that is a skybox. So for this, I you know had an AI generated one that I made myself. And obviously I just put in Gotham, dark buildings, um, but that like covers everything. So you see my 3D buildings I bought, uh, built myself. And then it still gives you that vibe. The reason I bring this up is because I know it's on, the, you know, the, the, the dome is quite grey and you can see the light on, on the top right. Mm -hmm. Started doing part two. I'm like, it's not dark enough. But I can literally <laughs> right click on my dome and just go, right, I want to take out the greens a bit. So you can bring down just the green and then or mm. just the makes it darker. You can enhance the reds. And yeah, when you, when you see part two and... Again, you know, you'll see the same buildings that I've made plus some, some more. But when you see the sky, you go, oh, okay, now it feels like it's really late at night. This kind of feels like it's dawn or dusk or whatever the one is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what I love the thing. You know, I love the the fine details that the VBverse gives you the options to do. And how how did you set these vehicles to, to, to move the way they do? Because this is multiple vehicles moving in different directions all at the same time yeah so this this was and again i can't really remember who who it was in the beta group that can't, i think it might have been metaverse live or somebody else i'm sorry if i've forgotten your name but they've opened pandora's box because they were like this pulse option lets you you know we were talking about it with the lights the these these vehicles are used the same option right so just imagine when you go into the vault now and you place your collectible down you've got those three arrows right the blue uh, so the green that goes up, mm -hmm. the blue that goes left, the red that goes right. You still have those arrows on in the VBverse if, if you want to use them, but they're, they're actual axes, right? So, for example, the Coca-Cola truck, it goes from right to left. Yep. Once you place your Coca-Cola truck down, you go right-click, edit properties. It will tell you the coordinates you have it at. And then what you oh. can do, oh, I want X coordinate to go start from here. And I want it to go from there and I want it to take 20 seconds to do so. So that that's how I would start. So I'd just get the Coca-Cola truck and then, you know, you just do the other ones, the same thing, but you change the times on them. Like, trust me, so this shot will, I once, if you don't get it the first time, you have to wait for the Coca-Cola truck to pass 10 times before it passes. Then the DeLorean truck passes at the DeLorean truck, the DeLorean car. So yeah, it, <laughs> So yeah, it Try. goes back. So it would it would reverse its path basically. So it goes backwards oh, and forwards, wow. backwards and forwards, yeah. and then he's timed it so that you get the, the exact moment, as you say, is that is the one that you see there. So yeah. you basically set the coordinate in terms mm -hmm. of locations, right? Like it's going to move from coordinate X, which is yeah. where it is right now at the moment on the right side, move it to coordinate y which is on the left side of this particular map is that right exactly yeah right. And, okay but you know and again i want to allude to this a little bit when you see part two yeah you're gonna see something that's gonna make you go how has he done that and i will say that you know i've, I've talked about this ever since i joined bb i think the reason why my videos are made the way they are and stuff like that is because i used to be a dj and producer and so I'm really good with timing. So I, when I say that, how do I even say it? No, I'll just say, I've got the Joe Madeira Batman riding the Triumph bike at high speeds, and they look like they're on each other all the time, right? Yeah, they do. And, and <laughs> that takes, you know, you've got one thing swinging like this, yeah? And then you're like, right, on that bit, I need to go. So it is literally like queuing a record as mm. a DJ. And then just finding the points. But when you when I got it, I said it's a Falcon straight away. I went, I am so happy with this. And he was like, oh snap, like let, let's go. So yeah. So yeah, yeah, I was happy with that shot as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no feedback on that. Let's just keep it. Just... <laughs> no notes. No yeah. notes. I, I'd also like to say as well, for people hearing this and they're going, Oh, I want to do that, but that sounds like such hassle. This is before VB bringing scripting. And coding, so you can make, a, you know, I don't know 100%, but this, this what we've got now, what I'm showing you, is absolute child's play. And soon, mm. you know, we'll be able to really go, oh, I want the car to go 
this way and then at this cross junction i want it to take a left like from what i've you know we've made out those things are going to be possible soon too in the bb verse so and you can get some you know you can add to that movement as well so it's not just a straight line you could rotate the truck as it's going you can get it to kind of do a a curve almost if you time it so there are there are you can take it a little bit further but mm-hmm. as tail said he's it's all about the timing and he he has got the timing down yeah, yeah. i i love your analogy of you being a dj because like if you're playing right at a party or a, or a club and you have to time it right so when the beat drops people feel it you know like you have audience kind of like tipsy you know dancing like having a good time with the friends enjoying the music and then if you get the transition wrong from one song to the other like the wrong song or like the wrong moment of the song or when the beat drops at the wrong time it just kills the vibe completely so that that was pretty cool that you are able to use a skill from from a slightly different category of of, of things you do to the this vivas exactly yeah and yeah thank you for again noticing that's exactly why I uh, credit myself for being able to do what I do. I don't think I would have picked up VV or the creation or anything like that if I wasn't a DJ or producer before. Because when I used to produce and DJ, I'd I'd hear a tune and in my head, visuals are going off. Like, oh, yeah. even, <laughs> right? Even if it's just colors, whatever. And so with this, I go, oh, I get to pick the tune and then do the visuals. So yeah it's just it's just come really naturally to me personally this is your boiler room set isn't it exactly this this is this is your boiler room yep (laughs) let's go um so this is also the scene that that got me thinking okay these guys are not creating a showroom this is actually a movie with a story sort of like a plot and this is this is going to get interesting from here and this shot took me a couple of times to really understand and, and realize and, and kind of catch it. But now that I I now that I know that you have put something in it, I appreciate it even more. So I'm gonna play it right now. Uh which so we see the DeLorean, the Coca-Cola truck, and then voila, Harley Queen disappears. And it took me a couple of times to to notice that. So to those who are watching on YouTube, you can see Harley Queen over here. And then DeLorean pass, Coca Cola truck pass, and she's gone. So the first time I saw it, I was like, okay, these guys probably set the coordinates or something like that so that Harley Quinn goes from the street to the sky, or whatever. But then when I saw the Coca Cola truck pass and I didn't see her move or, or anything like that, I was like, okay, well, this is next level. Can you walk us through your thought process and how do you make that happen? Yeah, no problem. I, I... So this wasn't again like necessarily scripted into Falcon's thing, um, but no, this was tales. This was this was. I mean, obviously, it lends itself very well to the rest of the story. But he came up with this shot entirely. This was a nice surprise. Yeah, and and what you have, Will. So obviously, I've got like a, a very a forty nine inch widescreen monitor, but when I'm <laughs> recording in sixteen nine, so to the right. If, if I had my Vverse fully open, yeah, to the right, you'd see a load of options. To the left, you see the load mm. of options. What you can do is you can hide a collectible, right? So I've got, I had Harlequin there. And then to the left, I've got like the object list view. And it's got Harlequin there with a little like eye symbol. So I was having to time it that once the Coca Cola truck goes past, I've got to quickly click on hide. And the amount of times it's like, this is the shot. And then you get like a millisecond or a <laughs> half. Like, no. Uh, and I was clicking on the wrong things. So that, you know, did take quite a few takes. And that's what hurt. Not hurt. But when Falco was going, can't see Harlequin properly. I'm like, I clicked her at the perfect time. Like, don't make me do it again. <laughs> He's like, I've got to do it again. Uh, but yeah, that's just a simple click and time. Mm. Again, comes into it. But. Yeah, that's how you make her disappear. It was awesome. I think, yeah, because you sent me this shot. I think she moved around so much. Initially, she was in the doorway of that, like, restaurant. <laughs> then she was under the motel sign and then thought she'd be better off kind of breaking that uh, window, I suppose, just in <clears> the <throat> middle. And it was also, it was a lot lighter, I think. So we turned down the lights and, yeah, I think I see her now, but... 
yeah, I still yeah. don't know if I wouldn't if I hadn't seen it for the first time. I just don't know. But it's a brilliant shot. It's really, really good. Thank you. Yeah, this just take it to the next level. But you guys mentioned um, like how there are different, maybe like you mentioned the possibility of having non-linear motions for these vehicles. I want to take people to this particular scene, which really impressed me. Maybe the second or third time I watch it. So uh, at the uh, at the one minute five second mark, mm -hmm. we see Harley Quinn riding the double seven. How do you call this? Like the glider. The the, the glider. Yep, the glider. Oh. And right there. So what really impressed me is the way that she flies it in. It looks like it 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 curves down a little bit before it goes back up again. And that yeah. kind of that kind of blew my mind a little bit because my perception of the way that you move things in the showroom, because I don't have Vivo's beta access, is you move things in a linear manner. So it goes this way, up or down, left or right, back and forth, right? But then here you see kind of like it curves down a little a little bit to the building. Talk about that. Yeah. So again, you know, it's kind of the same method is using is making the cars move. It's the same. You, you have it on a pulse. Um, I think Falcon, when I was doing the shots, he was like, can we make it look like the, the glider shakes a bit? And I'm like, mm. yeah. Instead of using the, you know, forward, back, up, down, you would pulse the rotation. So, you know, it, it's kind of doing that. Um, originally, when I made Gotham, the kind of glider, I don't, I don't know whether the crowd has seen me do this, but the glider kind of goes swoops and then mm -hmm. up. That's All right. I've a mix of y-axis and x-axis. So it's just a mix of them, mm. you know, some of them are a bit fluke. <laughs> uh, but we know when we've got the show, like, oh, okay, th th this is the shot. So, yeah, it's just a, when people get the V-verse, it's a load of trial and error if they want to try these things. Uh, but it's a lot easier than, you know, We've probably explained it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, yeah, I'm, I'm it's, quite, it's quite hard to explain when you can't see it or uh, do it. But we we will happily help people to to give it a go when when there's more people coming in. I'm sure right. they'll be able to figure it out. Yeah, but I was just awesome to see. And then another scene that I really like um, is when the right at the right here first. How how did you make the sign? Because I love the font, I love the way that it 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 fits the frame perfectly, and so obviously my favorite thing is the font. It just is is you know you look at it and you know okay this is Gotham City, you you you, well, you cannot miss it. I'm telling you, bro, you just made my year. Okay. <laughs> I have this is so it. underrated. This is so underrated. You see yeah, the font I and you know. Right, because so, and again, this is going to be so hard to like uh, for people to visualize this, right? But you just get shapes. So this is, you see the arch, right? Now that is an arch shape, obviously, mm. uh, that they do in the V reverse. Now the problem with this arch shape, and which me and Falcon have, you know, we fed back, and I know it's kind of nerdy or whatever, but you can't make the arch thinner, if 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 that makes mm. sense. Right? So what I had to do, I know I really wanted to. Are you talking do... about the like like the curvedness of the arc, or are you talking about the the border of it, like 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 how thick it is? Yeah, yeah. So, so for example, yeah, how, how do I even explain this, Val? Yeah, you so can for... change the curve. Mm -hmm. Um, so it could be it could be very like a steep curve, but the well, like you say, the thickness of it, the thickness of the band that you see there that's not going to get thinner if you... Oh, I see. Yeah. Yep, got it. And so this is why I was so pleased with this, because I did this on a previous vault. Like, I did my own thing that said Tails Asylum or whatever. Uh, but so that is two arches, right? One has a blackout, you know, one is fully black. The other one I've, I've you know, made transparent. So I've merged them in together so you get that black outline. And then with the lettering... It is literally me getting shapes, angling them. You oh know, wow! Pushing. So yeah, this is that, not a custom font that you put in, and no, oh, you didn't. Is, oh wow! Me with twenty shapes, <laughs> losing my mind trying yeah. to make 
But I, I'm again, well, I'm so happy that you pointed it out. Because <laughs> I, it's such a such a thing that people just go, oh, okay, he's just got letter and call, move on. Nope. No, these are, you know, let me have a look. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like twenty shapes, mm. yeah. just the lettering. You know, <laughs> I think fonts are so underrated because you see how different companies change their logos over time. Like you see the logo, of, let's say Google, like 20 years ago, it's it's different. It's like Time News Roman, right? But now they have kind of like modernized it a little bit. And you see certain things in in the fonts that Vivi use and you kind of, okay, this is kind of resonate with Vivi. And that's mm. why I appreciate the way that you, now that I know you didn't use any custom font, you just went ahead and customized it the way you want it to be. This just shows like, okay, this is DC and this is Batman. Yeah, but obviously just, just from a, a fan's point of view as well, mm -hmm. not, uh, you, you know, a, a few people have said to me, oh, well, DC, you're going to be annoyed that you've done. I'm like, I'm not trying to sell it. I'm just, yeah. it's like somebody who makes fan-made art and put yeah, it on yeah. Twitter. Yeah. This is the digital version. But if DC want to knock at my door and go, yo, you want to, and I'm there. All right, just just so that's out there on there dc um but yeah just just so people understand that this was not commissioned this was the, yeah. me and Fal hey to do this is just our passion project that we love that vv were like yo let, let's let's show this yeah that yeah that was awesome and then this is another one that i really like which the which is you put the face of joker on santa claus and this is yeah. very easy to see it is very obvious so maybe we can briefly talk about it right here because this is pretty cool. funny yeah perfect so yeah this is the and again i'm i'm not a vb spokesperson right but i'd assume that some ips may be not too you know they don't want the ips mixing so i know i was kind of i don't know what the term is pushing your luck pushing your luck not pushing your luck. <laughs> I was about to say pushing the envelope, but pushing the luck is the one. Look, and originally, if anybody's seen the Dark Knight, the Coca, this is not the Coca Cola truck, the truck that Joker is driving, it does say down the side, slaughter is the best medicine. Okay. Now I want to do that with the shapes, but yeah, I yeah. no, let me not. And I just, I've always been into my merge thing, and I did, you know, initially have some materials that I was going to put over it. I was like, let me not deface coca-cola truck too much but that is just the dick spring joker merged slightly because if you stop it you can see his legs pointing out the bottom um because he's 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 angled oh forward. right here wow i i did not even see that yeah and the oh, only yeah. reason i've let that slide is because i'm like people aren't gonna stop it and go ah oh, no I way see and yeah, here we are <laughs> i don't even pay attention to it there you go so yeah, yeah it's camera trickery but wow. this is this is the work of a batman fan you know this is tails is a huge batman fan the amount of detail he's put into it the the intricacies of the buildings the truth to the comics is just fantastic and as he said this is not something we were planning on well anybody seeing really it was just this we did because we love it we love the we love Batman, we love comics, we love the movies. This that's why we did it. And I think it was wonderful that Vivi chose this. Because yeah, this I, is the true representation of of their fandom, of their community, I think. Yeah. Um, it's I, very cool. One thing I want to add about this short, which nobody's picked up, and maybe they've seen it or just don't care. But above the Arkham sign, you should see what I was making was like a Joker clock. So um, you, this one right here? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's hard to see. If you go back inside Arkham a bit, if you, like, reverse, uh, and if you start coming back... Sorry, it was on that shot. So here, it's just above. Let me know when, when I should stop, okay? I'm just going to play it. Yeah, no worries. So, uh, it won't be until they start coming out of Arkham. So if you get to the... Yeah, so here, just pause it there. Oh, right there. Oh, wow. Right. Man, so, that's crazy. Get out of here, man. Yeah. <laughs> wow well, bro, let, let me tell you about this because this this was at a <laughs> point in Gotham where i nearly oh lost my, my god because i was building arkham asylum 
you know, first of all, it's an asylum. Okay, so it's where people go mad. And I was wanting to make all these horrible little things. And then I was like, right, let me make like a clock face. And I sent it, to, I remember sending it originally to Falcon. It just had the art shape as the smile and it looked like a bit of a clown. And I was like, how do I make this look really sinister? And I spent five hours putting the shapes, the little teeth. What I could do, Will, afterwards, I'll send you like um, a still of, of, so you could see it in detail. Yeah. And, then, and because of this pulse option, again, I was like, oh, my God, I can even look like it's a really fast clock. So you can have the the clock tower, you know, the clock face going round and round and round. Uh, and yeah, that's one of my favourite creations in Gotham, but nobody's really seen it. Or, you know, it's supposed to just be filler. But yeah. And you also <laughs> time it perfectly because the clock strikes at midnight, which is which, which is like quick, like at the same time with the explosion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I did that was definitely, definitely a fluke. Um, but it goes around right. five yeah. second thing. In Gotham, I've got another clock, which again, I'm so nerdy for attention to detail, but it takes a full minute exactly for it to go to 12 mm. to there, and then it goes, it has to go back around the other way, unless you have it on a constant loop, it's impossible. But yeah, it literally takes a minute. <laughs> what was it you said about OCD earlier on? I think, yeah, uh, yeah. I think you've proved it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And also, I like, so you mentioned like the Coca-Cola truck and IP, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. There are some vehicles that would fit into a movie perfectly. Like this fits into the movie, in my opinion. There are some movies out there that because they need a sponsor or like product placement, they would, yeah. you know, for example, this is a series called The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. uh, yes, season one. Or maybe yeah, season one, and they have a deal with Hyundai or something. So they put like a Hyundai Tucson, uh, like a SUV in there, and you yes, see yeah. this 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 apocalypse thing. There's zombies everywhere, and these guys driving a Hyundai, and you know, okay, this vehicle doesn't fit in here, but I know you guys need funding, so you can use it this time, but don't use it for the whole series. <laughs> yeah, that's, James that's Bond my, does yeah, that a yeah. lot. They do that a lot in James Bond movies, don't they? The watches, yeah. the cars, the yeah, yeah. Stuff. well I mean, james bond is is fine for me because james bond you have that like austin martin you know like that, that that british um vehicle you know but there's and james bond is a cool guy so they always give him the latest models to to advertise and mm. these cars looks really cool you know and then recently i watched uh, a series well a movie on netflix called a man called otto O T T O, mm -hmm. and it's have you guys seen it by any chance? Is it Tom Hanks? I don't think I've seen. Yep, it. yep. Okay, yeah. But um, he's a fan of. Well, I I read the book, and I think the setting is in Sweden, but they have to adapt to, um, the the U.S. market or something. So, um, it was made in the U.S. So there's this guy who's old who likes cars and all those kind of things, and he likes to fix things. And at the end, they put him in this brand new. Chevrolet truck, which doesn't fit in really well with the whole <laughs> theme and how you understand about this particular person. Same thing to the Hyundai Tucson, you know, yeah. in The Walking Dead. You just, if there is an apocalypse happening, you you <laughs> you wouldn't hop on like a Hyundai Tucson, you know. You would probably need like like a like a Jeep Wrangler or like a Ford F one fifty, you know. Yeah. But what you have here works perfectly fine for me. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, unfortunately the trucks you know it was the choice between this and the chimichanga i oh, don't think you know no way. <laughs> said to me they were like oh i would have loved to have seen you use maybe a marvel poster as like a billboard and i'm like you know dc and marvel i'm not trying and that that's that's my line you know mm -hmm. i'm not trying to trying to mix those those ips too much yeah, but you wouldn't like you wouldn't have Harley Quinn stomping on Boba Fett's head or anything like that in there, would you? You wouldn't put no, that in. No, look, man. <laughs> you wouldn't really? put that in. You just completely flawed my plan there, Falcon. But look, <laughs> I'm gonna go there is nobody that looks more like security guards than the Boba Fett. So look, no. they that they were friendly fire. They might they might catch friendly fire in part two, but apart from that, they're fine. It's no nice. collectibles were harmed in the making of these movies. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's me with like, so I wear Nike shoes, and I thought it would be so weird if I wear Nike shoes and 
Adidas uh, sweater or something like that. Uh, but I mean, like, I have no idea. Like, I have uh, sorry, I have no uh, problem with the way you use these Star Wars collectibles because you you don't really see it. Like, you see, okay, these these security guards, right? But the, a lot of them face down. Oh, also, like, it's pretty cool that you you put the uh, Catwoman up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so me as well. Like, that was part of Arkham that I built the first. So. Mm. I was going to have them all like a load of, you know, villains behind bars with just their heads. So you've seen the Joker shot, uh, the steel that came out the other day that I, that I put out. Um, that was all the start of that. And and really, it was funny because when Falcon came around, he was like, this is definitely your Gotham. This isn't like the Gotham. This is your. <laughs> mm. And when filming, I you know, for example, I'd have Batman in the tower and that tower goes in and out and it looks beautiful. But I had to get rid of some of that for the filming. But then little bits like the Catwoman there just kind of stayed. Um, and like this, you know, I am kind of creating a vault. But the film, I wouldn't say it was an afterthought, but whilst I'm building this, so this wasn't like I'm building this for the video that me and Falcon are about to make. Mm. It was um, wanting to build the world for me, building my own vault or showroom. You know, it's still got... So I think this this shot you've got on it now, Will, is the perfect example of that, is I built myself a little Batman Who Laughs collectible case, mm. you know, plays in there and spins around. So if you had that in a museum, not a museum, but a digital museum, that would make sense because it's the Batman Who Laughs, he's in his own container, you know, you've got the spikes and, and stuff I like that. I love how so you use the spike over here because, like, you see it and you know, okay, this is Batman Who Laughs doesn't matter if if he shows up or not like you you look at it and you know okay this is his yeah tales of arkham asylum is insane and you will only be able to pre appreciate it when you visit his his gotham city it's such an amazing building and you can see bane's head at the top um and that's why people are gonna have to come and pay a visit when they get into the bbverse isn't it yeah, yeah this is this is way. incredible yeah um, yeah so I, I better go put out a disclaimer. We don't have Bane on VV, okay, guys? Uh, <laughs> you know, but it was funny because I know I've always wanted Bane. I know there's a Bane in the Batman uh, collectible, you know, black and white series that they're releasing on VV, so hopefully we get him eventually. But I was doing this and, you know, a few people said to me, oh, I really like this, but why have you got that stupid white head? I'm like, do you not see that as Bane? And they're like, yeah, but the metal grills are cool on their own. I'm like, the metal grills wouldn't have made it in if I wasn't making Bane. Like that, that's his mask, bro. Like, uh, and yeah, so that, that's the Saffin mask with uh, you know a load of VV materials. Even this the is eye. very creative. This is very creative, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I, I love it. Give it a bit. Yeah. Wow. Like even they're just shapes, you know, and one set to green, one set to white, and just just played and around. So death just to the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I like, like about is... all these things, like. They are so, this is just like a two minute and 23 second video. So like 140 seconds. But the more you watch it, the more things you can find from it. And that's why, that's, that's what make your story, um, uh, Mr. Falcon and, and your, de like your design method tells so amazing. It's like for, for this good work, the more you see it, the more things you can find, which is really awesome. But I don't I'm think so Tales, you know, you didn't build this to make a movie in it, did you? You built Gotham City. It just so happens that now, because you've constructed so much, it can be used as a movie set. So all the details that are in there, as you have, Will, you know, you just find them as you watch more and more and more, which is so awesome. Yeah, guys, I'll let you know as well. I'm sorry, because I'm on my phone. This is such amateur out. He's saying I've got 10 battery. I am going to charge, but if I'm holding my phone and my camera goes all... <laughs> no worries. No. Yeah. So now that we have gone through the video, um, uh, again, it's it's amazing to, to know all the details and to find extra things from it. Um, I want to talk about... We have like maybe 10, 15 minutes left. I want to talk about your next plan with this um, series uh, and what do you what 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 goes from here right oh, i'm glad you asked this because yeah so when i said to falcon about this i was like i want to make a trilogy as well because again mm. 
back in the vault days, if I if I made one vault, you're not going to ever see that vault again in a video. I'm not going to go back in there, re remove stuff. I'm just going to build a brand new one. But with this, you know, this is two and a half months work. You're not seeing, you know, you're probably seeing about 35%-ish of the Gotham build in this video. Uh, but for this next one, you know, <laughs> I, get, I, I get excited talking about it. The Dark Knight has been my favourite movie ever since I walked out that cinema the first time viewing it. Um, I just think the, the pacing, Heath Ledger's acting, like I love the Joker, like all of this stuff. So this next one is going to be my, my, well, I don't know whether Falcon or Green, but my, our, our Dark Knight, okay? Yeah. It's called The Chase. So it is going to be all about, you know, okay, Joker's just broken out of Arkham. Batman's not happy about this. He needs to get him. So <laughs> uh, we've created so far, sent it to Falcon this morning, one minute's worth of, of material so far. And every single second is is action. You know, it does have the first couple of stills of, okay, we're in Gotham again. And then it's bang. And, and obviously last time you saw gliders flying, you know, cars going. This, this time you're going to, it's constant like that. It, you know, there's movement all the time. And the thing I'm so happy with, and again, we kind of alluded to this at the beginning, uh, for anybody that wants to know what this is going to look like, go and watch The Dark Knight and go to the very final shot where Batman, you know, is behind him and he's on his bike and, and he's going away. The last shot I sent Falcon last night was that shot. But yeah. he's chasing, he is chasing the Coca-Cola truck. So you're going to see, you know, at a crossroads, Coca-Cola cut goes past, then Batman on his bike, and we've managed to, because you can create scenes that look like they're moving, like there's going to be one or two shots where it is a still shot, but you can kind of get away with it and make it. But Falcon was like, if we can do these while these are moving, it's going to be nuts. It and is. we've got to that point. Yeah. This man's timing. Ridiculous. It does. It looks, it looks so good. It really does. It's, um, what I said to you today, I, I think it's better than, the first one yeah. um uh, I and, think. <laughs> yeah it's just really cool the pace of it i'm really enjoying it just goes it goes and goes and goes um and yeah everything you've sent me has just been absolutely awesome and it's yeah it's very cool you know yeah it's a batman movie it's a big adventure it's very very cool but i i don't think it should be you know not, i don't know what the right time is you're, you're very humble falcon right and you keep on saying to me, but Tails, this is your thing. You've created it. You've directed it. Da, 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 da. It would not be what it is if it wasn't for your writing. And um, Falcon, you know, he, he sent me pretty much all of part two. We might have to do a little bit to the end. But then we were on the phone and we were like, right, what about part three? Because I said, should Harlequin be next to the Joker in the truck for this? Because that mm. could help set up other storylines. And then he was like, no. Because when we get to part three, you can almost do a, a flashback or this is what Harley, you know, spoiler alert, guys, Harley Quinn isn't in this one. Uh, but Mike could be in the last one. And Falcon, you know, I'm not going to say anything now, but Falcon's already come up with a rough premise for, for the third one. That's going to be amazing. A lot of that's going to be shot in what Falcon has created in his own vault because we couldn't do it in Gotham due to technical reasons. But man i cannot wait to get to part three and show yeah. you guys what falcon has really built because he you know he did the w of wayne towers in gotham there's a multi-story car park which you haven't seen which we might use in this one but more than likely the third which mm. you're going to see and then can i say it like what what you've i mean yeah you yeah know, you say go ahead Ax axis chemicals now oh uh, wow that's obviously in the original Batman 1989 movie where Jack Nicholson's, you know, portrayal of the Joker becomes the Joker. And when I say Falcon, like Falcon sent me a photo or, or like an art, you know, and I was just like, how are you going to do this? It's sublime how spot on it is. It's just like I couldn't create what he's done in the vault like that. I'm just like, Wow. So, yeah, I can't wait for, for that and, and for the final story to, you know, be told. And then going forward, 
maybe I'll just chill out on the really dark gothic <laughs> shit for a bit. Sorry, no, you won't. Right. Uh, no, you won't. Yeah. No, I won't. You're right. You're right. I won't. But that, awesome, that's our right. plans. And you can just see, you know, thank you, Tails. But it's just that the enthusiasm for this project, it's it's just great. We just, our, our process, our daily routine is, if we take it from my my wake up time, which is around half six, I wake up, I look at my phone, Tails has sent me new shots. I try now not to immediately react because I needed a bit of time to process them. <laughs> I will then say, you know, what I love and then small tweaks to be made. About four o'clock when I finish work, I give him a ring and uh, then we properly dissect it. Wow. Then he goes about his business until God knows when in the morning. And then uh, the whole thing repeats itself. And it's yeah. it's just it's just brilliant. It's so much fun. It's a wonderful collaborative process that has been because uh, I'm I'm surprised he hasn't got more annoyed with me. He has asked me <laughs> what's my honest feedback. And, you know, I'm. I don't hold back. I tell him exactly what I think. Yeah. But it, it must be disheartening at times. <laughs> no, it's so important though, Falcon, because there's been a couple of times, last couple of days, where you said something initially and my brain just went, oh, I spent so much this shot, but I need to go, he's doing this. I, I know, not I need to think this. I know you're doing this because you can, you know it can be better, right? And there's been loads of times where I've put out content I was happy with at the time, then a day later i'm like why have i done that i should have done this and the fact that you know because i know I, I i'm quite opinionated i'm quite out there on twitter you know I, I'm, I'm not this person that goes after people that some people might think it's only because i care and so so falcon bless him sometimes he might be a little bit like i know you're not gonna like this but please to and and <laughs> it's so important that he's 100 percent honest because at the end of the day we're just trying to put out fan made content, but I want this to be as good as it can possibly be. And if it wasn't for Falcon Guy, no, that may take off them ro rose tinted glasses. This can be better. So yeah, and yeah, I think that's a testament to our to the relationship we develop that we yeah. can be that honest with each other and not, uh, you know, hang up and not speak to each other for four days because that hasn't happened yet. But yeah, it doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just honestly, in just generally in life, Falcon Ryan. This is again why we get on so well is that we can one laugh at ourselves, mm. two have accountability when we've messed up, mm -hmm. and three just, just being a bit self aware. I know I'm the, you know, you know, I, I know why Falcon might tread on eggshells a little bit when he's got to tell me something bad because I know how I react. But because you know, it's mad that we met on Twitter. <laughs> but we have this we have this friendship now that we're just so honest you know like falcon will call me up tell me he's, he's had a really bad day and i might just crack up laughing because to me what he went through is funny <laughs> but really he need, i know he wants somebody to you know give him a hug i'm like you're not getting that from me you're getting laughed <laughs> but he I knows that, that about me and i don't have that about him i do and you know you know this will and you sort of alluded it to it at the beginning we this journey we've all been on it's been it's had a lot of ups and downs um over the past few years it's been quite intense the the vv journey um and it's given us all so much but i think it has it's brought us both, both all closer together as well um as a yeah. community which has been has been something i i can't be i'm very grateful for it i think yeah. it's been great that's my utility guys uh, it's it's been amazing to learn more about your story and most importantly your your friendship because i think you guys have the perfect the perfect combo here mr falcon you have the mind to visualize it and you understand from watching your movies and things like that of, of how things work and what works and what doesn't work um and tells you have your your hands who that can create all these amazing um uh effects and you you know how to put things together and you know how to utilize um, videos gf and create the different different textures and different things that people have to watch mo multiple times to realize and you have the ear of a dj to put mm -hmm. the sound to the visual and to that just complement things a lot better and uh, again i'm super grateful to to have the honor of present your work um, thank you for that. One of the yeah. awesome uh, vivos demo 
to really open up people's mind of the hard work that you guys have done and also the VV team has done so that we can all enjoy. And I really appreciate you guys you know, spending time with us today and uh, hope to have you on again in the near future and talk about yeah, the part two and part three. That'd be amazing. Yeah, thank, thank you for having us on. We'll honestly, you know, me, me and Falcon haven't done many of these interviews, but a lot of them, you know, I'm just very appreciative that you wanted to dig into the creative con concepts because that's all really, we really want to talk about, <laughs> you know, you know, and, and you're pointing out the little things that means the world to me because I will do, like I say, spend five hours on something that probably nobody's going to notice. When somebody notices these things, it's, it's yeah, our job is done. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, thank you so much for saying those things to him, Will. That that is... <laughs> <laughs> you messaged him, didn't thank you? Thank God. Thank God someone has. <laughs> now, now he doesn't have really to call you every him. day and, and, and ask why hasn't anybody noticed yeah. it, right? <laughs> it means that when I get those shots tomorrow morning, I'm really gonna I'm really gonna I'm really... <laughs> no, thank you so much for having us, man. Really appreciate yeah. it. And and as Tail said, that, that you've allowed us to just explain our creative process is very cool thank you for everything you do um mm -hmm. it's 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 a, it's quite surreal to be honest being asked to do this um my like my wife says oh what are you doing tonight well i'm talking on youtube to uh, <laughs> someone who is a big vv influencer and you know he's, he's a really big fan and a big youtuber and it's like right okay you carry on <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. um thank you appreciate yeah. it thank yeah. you guys and uh, I hope you guys will have a, a great Friday tomorrow and a, and an awesome weekend with your family too. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. All right. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. That's it, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have enjoyed the episode today. And if you have, remember that gentleman agreement. We will continue working until 1 a.m. just for you. But in return, we ask you to subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss out on the actionable and valuable insights, everything VV and Omi related. Don't forget to give us a rating and tweet at us. So let us know what you think about the podcast so that we can refine the content better just for you. Thank you so much. We hope to see you again next time.